During the last two years, we have witnessed events that were unimaginable just three to four years ago. While there is an instinctive urge to want to get revenge, we should not respond with the same hatred they displayed towards us. I know this will not be a popular opinion, but let me explain further. Before I get into that, let's revisit a few specific stories to remind us of what occurred. People were attacked by police and dogs for protesting government policies. Toddlers, not just children, but toddlers, were forced to wear face coverings at daycares and schools across the country. Some families were even kicked off of planes, all because a two-year-old refused to wear a mask. It was complete insanity. Senior citizens in nursing homes, who are often very lonely, were not allowed social interactions with their loved ones. No visiting, no holding hands, no hugs, nothing. At best, you could look at them through glass as if you were visiting a zoo. Funerals often had a maximum of 10 people who were allowed to attend. And those few people had to socially distance from one another so that even a grieving widow cannot be consoled by her children and family members. Two. You have to put the chair back, I'm afraid. You can't move the chair to it's old. Meanwhile, if a U.S. congressman dies, a lengthy and elaborate funeral was allowed. Not only was it allowed, but they aired it on TV for the world to see almost intentionally rubbing it in the face of us common folk. Yes, they mostly wore masks, but they could still hold each other's hands, give each other hugs, and be as close to each other as they pleased. And there was over a hundred people crammed in there throughout the service. Just despicable. Playgrounds were closed, basketball hoops boarded up, skate parks were even filled with sand. Even beaches were closed. In fact, you remember the one guy who was arrested for paddleboarding by himself? And these were all outdoor activities, which if anything should have been encouraged. High school proms were canceled, or if they weren't, they danced with their backs to each other. Churches were forced to close, and if they didn't close, they'd get harassed by the police. Bashir issued an executive order against mass gatherings, including churches, as a way to stop the spread of COVID-19. Pastor Roberts says it's his right not to follow it. State troopers were taking down license plate numbers and placing notices on the cars of those who attended. They will soon get an order to self-quarantine for two weeks. Employment was arbitrarily determined to be either essential or non-essential. The thought of being not allowed to earn a living for your family is just wildly unbelievable just a couple years ago. Preventative medical screenings and procedures were postponed, which will most certainly prevent early treatments for cancer and other diseases. And these same pro-lockdown, pro-mask, pro-vaccine mandate politicians were blatantly hypocritical. They didn't abide by the same rules they enforced on others. Then you have sickening images and videos where the children are all wearing masks, but the politicians themselves aren't. They're more important than you, after all. And of course we had the insane and unrelenting pressure to get vaccinated. Propaganda and the demonization of unvaccinated was everywhere. It's hard to overstate how insane this pressure was. The lockdowns cost people their ability to earn a living, without adequate compensation from the government. People lost their life savings and were eventually banished from society if they didn't partake in a specific medical procedure. Even worse, children suffered as well. It's now widely acknowledged that school closures were a mistake. And now I see these people pretending they never advocated for it in the first place. Fast forward to now, the end of 2022. The Atlantic wrote an article titled, Let's Declare a Pandemic Amnesty. I won't go into detail about the article, but here's the gist. Hey, mistakes were made. Who could have known? It was not an apology. In fact, they say everyone who got it right were lucky. They argue that most errors were made by people who were working in earnest for the good of society. <laughs> Give me a break. As you can imagine, this was widely criticized by everyone on the right and those who care about freedom. They mocked it and basically said, Go screw yourselves to 
put it mildly. So despite how upset I get by everything I've described so far, I don't think that's the right attitude to have. Or at least I'd like to make a distinction between the Fauci's of the world and your coworker or neighbor. Sure, your coworker may have been unpaid mass police, or they bought into the medical health establishment narrative around masking, vaccine effectiveness, etc. But it's easy to see how they did. On the surface, it makes sense to trust the experts. Why these experts are wrong on most everything is a topic for another video. But I'm reserving my contempt for those in power who have weaponized people's empathy. What I mean is, most people are considerate of others. No one wants to get anyone else sick or knowingly spread a disease. So these politicians turn that natural feeling of empathy into a tool to gain more power. They use this as an opportunity to push for vaccine passports, vaccine mandates, etc. Yes, they should pay a price for ruining people's lives. At a minimum, they need to be removed from these positions of power and never be trusted again. Entities like the CDC should never be trusted again and ultimately abolished. I'm rehashing these events so we don't forget what happened. But more importantly, to prevent it from ever happening again. But here's the thing. Don't fall into the trap of hating half the country. Don't fall into the trap of hating your neighbor. That's what they want. That's the easy thing to do. And yes, that is our default response, but it's not a biblical one. In Romans it reads, Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge, I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. So as unnatural as this seems to be, and it's very hard to do, this is the approach Christians should take. In short, your neighbors are not your enemy. Or more simply, love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, and we should abolish the CDC and Fauci belongs behind bars. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching and let me know your thoughts below.